When CS 1.6 entered my life, it quite literally changed it forever. At the supple age of 12 in 2003, I had never experienced online gaming before. I was one of the last kids on the block to have a cable internet connection, which left me out of the delinquent online gaming circle my peers had. Yes, Gold Source era CS 1.6 was played on a 56k connection, but good luck convincing my mom I needed the phone line for 4 hours after school to rob my brain while gaming. However, when I finally did get that cable internet connection, and bought an ump for the first time in CS Italy, I was in awe. Standing there with that ump and CT spawn blew my literal mind. As indescribable the experience of online gaming was for me for the first time, the takeaway was that I was absolutely hooked. I'd wake up and the first thing on my mind was CS. I couldn't focus on anything else. In earnest, I was in love. The game connected with me on a profound level like I've never experienced before. So how did this game really capture my heart? Modification. I fell in love with the CS 1.6 modding scene. I couldn't believe there was content out there beyond the base game. You couldn't do this with any of the console games I was playing at the time. I remember the first custom map I downloaded in CS was this Star Wars level. I thought, what? You can play Star Wars in Counter-Strike? How is this even possible? One day during school, my friend Peter told me about gun skins. I knew about the custom levels, but the custom guns? No way. I was like, what are you talking about gun skins? He looked at me like I was an absolute nub because I introduced him to the game. He said, hey, during lunch, let's go to the library, act like we're working on a project, and I'll show you the site where you can download skins and use them in game. He went on to explain the different models you could download, like custom knives, AKs, and M4s. My jaw was dropped through this entire conversation. Couldn't believe it. Of course, being the CS nuts that we were, we skipped lunch and went directly to the library as soon as that bell rang. There we are in the library, sneakily typing nonsense into a Word document like pickles and kittens with a minimized web browser. Peter went over the game plan with me. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. The librarian is definitely gonna think we're up to no good, so you're on watch duty. If the librarian catches us looking at guns on the computer, mom is gonna freak. This was serious. My 12 year old ass was as stern as a US Marine in that moment. The risk reward of learning about gun skins was too juicy though. I had to see this. I peered over. The librarian was seated around the corner not minding us. We thought we were sneaky picking the computer in the corner, but I'm pretty sure that made us extra conspicuous. Whatever, we had an objective to accomplish. Our destiny at this moment was looking at these guns. Boom, Peter was a fast as shit typer and slammed in the URL of the CS gun model site that he had memorized. CSSkinshack.net or some shit. I, I don't know. We zoomed through cyberspace like juvenile hackers. The adrenaline was pumping from my butthole through my ears. The page finally loaded on the crappy version of Windows 98 the school computers had. Oh my god. I remember drooling over this massive katana knife. Huh. Oh crap. The librarian. She's coming. The librarian walked around the corner to check in on us. We were totally caught in the act. Luckily, Peter minimized the page before she saw the guns and our faces were as white as ghosts. She said, I know you guys aren't working on a project. So Peter, with his fast 12-year-old thinking skills, just flipped the power switch on the PC, deleting all evidence of the web page being of our doing. Whew. We got kicked out of the library and went to lunch. She never checked our cookies and all I could think about for the rest of the day was those skins. So that night when I got home, I tried to install them. Fortunately, my dumbass thought all you had to do was download a zip file and it was installed. Alas, the skins never appeared in game. So the weekend rolled around and I asked Peter if he could come over and help me install them correctly. He did and the second he got those skins installed, all I wanted was for him to leave my house so I could tear up the internet searching for skins in solitude. I spent hours looking at skin hosting sites and customized the absolute shit out of every gun in the game. It was exciting having this much control over CS. You could get anything you wanted assuming you knew where to find it or to make it yourself. A video game had never been so expansive for me before. The options were endless. I mean, look at all of these skins. It's just awesome having this level of customization. Also felt like there was a psychological component to it too. Like if you got that AK model you just loved, customized sounds included, you'd play better because it felt like you were really this badass firing the perfect gun you picked out. I soon exhausted all of the skin sights and thought, hmm, you know what would be cool? If I could make the gun models myself. So a few Google searches and form posts later, I concluded, yeah, I'm too dumb for this. But the skins, I can make those. You see, skinning guns was easy for CS. Here's how we did it. Step one, find a model some other jerk spent a bunch of time on and download it. Two, download Half-Life Model Viewer and import the model. Three, export the bitmap textures. Four, pirate Photoshop and start editing. Five, import the textures and save the model. Six, pass the thing off as your own. Who cares? The internet was a wild west back then. It was literally that easy to skin a weapon. In fact, I made an entire Black Hawk Down themed skin pack with other people's models. All I do was change the arms and hands to match, but it did feel a bit fraudulent. I wasn't actually making the guns, so I knew I needed to learn how to model. And I did! 
I put my nose to the grindstone. I downloaded this archaic software called Milkshape 3D, which is kind of awful in comparison to any other 3D program we have today. And I made my first weapon, a B99. I had a clan mate at the time help me compile it because I was too dumb to do that myself, but it was a start. Think about how exciting this was at the time. You bought CS and got to customize the crap out of it. You got tools provided to you by the developers and community and learned a lot about game development. You truly owned that game. The spirit of customization was alive and well in Valve games until one day, CSGO came around. CSGO sucks. I said it. Don't care. By all means, CSGO isn't a terrible game. In fact, it's a great game. Gave us features that should have long been in the older versions of the game. But for me, CSGO sidelined the thing I loved most about Counter-Strike. Modification. Yes, there's still custom maps, models, in the works, but it's seriously downplayed and hidden in the community browser section. The Carmackian hacker culture Valve once championed took a serious backseat with the induction of CSGO. And one of the things I cared most about in CS was taken away from us. The ability to create skins and models. I would have never expected CS weapon skins and models to be behind a paywall. Never, never ever, let alone gambling for them. I often ask when playing these AAA titles how a whole generation of gamers got goaded into paying for assets the community once made for free out of a labor of love, fully supported by the developers. Yes, these titles are free and they need to make a profit somehow, but this way? There couldn't have been an alternative in our timeline for these companies to profit off of their free games? I don't have a solution for it either though. And that's one thing, but when there's strict terms of service against the modding of these games, that's what really, really hurts me. When I bought CS 1.6, it really felt like I owned the game. I couldn't fundamentally change the game engine, but I could mod it and there would be no repercussions for those actions. I could design levels with dev tools, create custom sounds, sprites, player models, and the most intimate of all, the weapon models. The spirit of Carmackian hacker culture has seriously taken a dive with modern video games. When Doom and Quake came out, it fully supported the modding of those games. Valve followed suit, in fact, if it wasn't for Carmackian hacker culture, we would have never gotten Counter-Strike in the first place. CS is literally a hacked version of Half-Life. Customizing games was ingrained in the online gaming industry at this time. It inspired so many to learn tools, and certainly inspired me to learn. I mean, look at how cool this is! I created an alien smoking a bong, and it's a knife model in CS. Look, I'm like, I'm destroying people with this thing, it's crazy! Can you do this in Valorant? Fortnite? Can you make an alien smoking a bong in Fortnite and kill someone with it? Can you do that? Or any AAA title coming out today, can you do that? No, you can't. Yeah, maybe Roblox, actually. There was utter creative inspiration in those days, and it wasn't about maximizing profit margins, turning the players into cash cows. We've been zombified to purchase map packs and skins, and the industry is quickly trying to erase our memories of the glory days when you could customize their games with full support from the developers. It's like they put us into a state of amnesia that all this existed once, and I feel so sorry for younger players who have no idea they're being milked for money. In fact, they're excited and eager to spend money on these skins with the same amount of fervor I had when seeing those old gun model sites. They don't know any better. Of course, the money machine wins, and devs gotta eat. What was once a labor of love is a cold-hearted marketing gimmick that everyone fell for. Paying for skins feels so sinful to me, so I remember the days when kids like me made modifications for our own fun and enjoyment. Next time you're thinking about buying a skin, maybe just think about what you're doing. Things aren't the same. Damn crazy, but uh...